Hey everyone, my name is Stefan and today we are diving into one of the most powerful design patterns in .NET, the decorator pattern. We'll explore a common problem, I see how decorator pattern can solve it, and then we'll explore some composed decorator for real world use cases. Finally, I'll introduce you to Scrutor, an amazing library that makes working with decorators in .NET even easier. So, this is a decorator. This is a decorator. This is also a decorator. So, let's see some real world example. Okay, so imagine this. You're working on a product service for an e-commerce platform. For example, you need to add some caching. Also, you need to add some logging. And also, you need to add some retry, retry policy. So, cache the product data to avoid un unnecessary database calls. Log each request to keep track on, of operations. And retry the operation in case of transient errors like network glitches. So, all of those three you need to add to a product, to a product service. At first glance, you might thinking, I will just edit caching, caching, logging, and retry policy directly to the service. What happens when new requirements pop up? For example, you now have to add some rate limiting, or you need to add some auditing. Your service quickly becomes a tangled mess of responsibilities that's hard to maintain, test, or extend. Let's jump to the Visual Studio to see uh, this in action. So, let's see an example without decorator pattern. The first thing we need here is a domain class, product, which contains three uh, properties, ID, name, and a description. For the product service, we need, a, uh, we need an abstraction I product service, which contains only one method get product for the certain ID. And we have an implementation of that I product service, which is a product service. Okay, in product service, now we need to add all of those three concerns that we mentioned before. The first one is logging logic, for which one we are going to use a console right line. The another one is a caching logging. For caching logging, we are going to use a memory cache. And the last one is retry logic, retry policy using poly, where we are simulating fetching product data from the database. The last one, we are going to store the result in the cache and we are going to return the product. So, what are the problems with this approach? You can see that now this method, instead of, let's say, just calling the database to get uh, data, which probably be three or four lines of code, we have almost 50 lines of code for getting the data, including all the necessary concerns we have. One of the problem of this approach is tightly coupled logic. Caching, logging, and retry logic are all mixed in with the core business logic of the fetching product. The another one is difficult to extend. Adding a new concern, rate limiting or auditing would require modifying this class, breaking the open-close principle. Another one is hard to test. Also, we have a code duplication. If you need caching logic or logging logic in another service, in another class, you would need to duplicate this code. So, what is the solution? This is the place where decorator pattern saves the day. Instead of putting all of these responsibilities into a single class, the decorator pattern lets us dynamically add behaviors to an object without modifying its core logic. It adheres to the open-close principle because our objects are open for extension but closed for modification. So let's see how we are going to solve all of those problems. Instead of adding each service separately to the product service, here we compose all the services we need. All services, caching, logging, retry policy, implement iProductService, 
but they also act as a wrapper in relation to everything that can be implemented by iProduct service. This actually means that when the client or the user executes the getProduct method, in this case, the retry policy will be called first, which contains an instance of the next service that implements uh, iProduct service, which is the logging service in this case, which also contains an instance of the next service that will implement iProduct service, which is caching, where caching forwards the call to the final product service from where we get the data. So you can see that this is a pure implementation of decorator pattern where we have i product service uh, which acts like i component product service is a concrete component for i product service and we have all decorators for product service which are retry policy logging and caching so let's jump in the code to see how we can implement this we are back to the visual studio where we can see how to implement those services using decorator pattern. The code from this video will be in our .NET community, which is the first .NET community on school platform. You have a link down below in the description. We have a product class, we have iProduct service interface, and we have product service implementation of that interface, which simulate retrieving product from the database. The first thing we want to add here is the logging logic. Okay, I'm going to add a new folder and call it decorators. Into decorators, I will going to add logging product service decorator. The first thing we need to do is to implement iProduct service. This decorator needs to have logger, which is going to be a logger for logging product service decorator and also it should contain a wrapper for i product service exactly for everything that implements i product service okay let's generate constructor uh, in fact let's move it to primary constructor now we should implement get product method the first thing we are going to do is to log some information. We are going to call inner decorator to execute the next service. But if there is no service, by default, the product service will be called. So we have inner get product. And on the end, we are going to just return the product. So here we, we have a logging product service decorator which decorates currently a product service. It acts like a wrapper uh, on a product service. Next decorator that we are going to implement is caching decorator. Which also needs to implement I product service. Which also needs to have I product service inner service and we should have iMemory cache for caching okay let's move it to the primary construct so for the caching it is the same situation just some other implementation we will check if there is a product in cache and if there is a product in cache we will return that product if not we are going to call next service in the chain that is the next service that implements i product service if there is not such service the product service implementation will be called at the end we will set the product that we got and we will return the product now we have a caching product service decorator and the last one that we need to implement is retry policy decorator we need to do the same thing so i need i product service which is the inner service and i need i async policy so in implementation i'm going to 
await retry policy execute async and in that i will call the last inner product okay so now we have all the three decorators we mentioned before and now we need to register all the three decorators including product service for that i'm going to create a new class pendants injection and here i'm going to create a method that will return service collection the first thing i'm going to do here is to add a transient service and now i'm going to register the decorators manually here the first thing i'm going to do is to uh, get a required service for product service the another thing i need to do is to get all the required services for caching logging and retry policy let's do that for retry policy we have service provider required service async policy now we need the cache memory and for the logging i'm going to get a logger for logging product service decorator okay so now we have all the necessary things for implementing those decorators let's add decorators one by one so the first decorator i'm going to add is retry decorator so i will call retry product service decorator and i will pass product service so this is the inner service that implements i product service and i will pass my retry policy that i created the another one i'm going to create is a caching decorator and here i'm going to pass retry decorator because caching decorator will wrap retry decorator and will pass cache memory and the last one the logging decorator after that i just need to return the last one which is logging decorator okay before we move on the order of adding decorators are really important why because the first decorator that will be called is the logging decorator because it's a wrapper of the caching decorator which will be called second the retry decorator will be called third one and the product service which is the last base service that implements i product service will be called the last one if you want for example to change the order be between caching decorator and logging decorator you would need to add here logging decorator to pass retry decorator and instead of passing retry decorator to caching decorator you need to pass logging decorator and to return a caching decorator so the order of registering decorators here is really really important now let's call this add decorators manually method in a program cs class okay before that i just forgot to add my async policy registration let's create some break points for each decorator and let's go to the product service to put a breakpoint okay now let's run the application my application is, is up and running on the port 7 node aa and now let's the endpoint for the product for get product the first method the first decorator uh, that triggered is the logging product decorator and if we go to the dependency injection when we register those decorators we can see that first one that will be called is the logging decorator the next one if i go to the inner get a product the next one is a caching product service decorator we can see that caching decorator is the second one so the order is opposite the next one will be try product service decorator in the end we have a get product from product service if we execute this we will get id to name sample product and we don't have a description for product blame on me by composing these decorators in this order each one handle its own responsibility independently 
making the solution more modular and easy to maintain. Each decorator implements the same interface, iProduct service, and wraps the base service, which also implement iProduct service. So, for example, for logging product service decorator, the base service would be caching decorator. For the caching decorator would be retry policy decorator. For this decorator would be a product service. Okay, let's make this process even simpler by using Scrutter. Okay, let's add a new Nougat package, Scrutter. Now, in the dependency injection, let's create another method. Add decorators with scrutter and pass iService collection. Now, we need to add transient, but let's add it with a interface. And we can use scrutter to register our decorators. So, we have a method which is called decorate. And for types, I can pass product service interface and the first decorator which is your try product service decorator i can do the same for other two which is caching caching the de product decorator and now i can do for the logging okay let's instead of calling manually decorators let's call decorators with scrutter let's run application and let's see what we have now let's execute this endpoint well, first thing we have it's a logging like before the next one caching like before and the last one last decorator is retry policy decorator and on the end we have calling the product service okay awesome so why is the scrutter really useful library because instead of manually registering each decorator scrutter allows you to scan assemblies and configure decorators in a one intuitive block which is this one decorate so why to use decorator pattern here are the key benefits the first one is it keeps your code clean and modular by separating concerns so instead of putting all the necessary services in a product service in a get product method we separated all those concerns we needed and in this way we keep it really simple the another thing is that it allows you to extend functionality dynamically without touching the core logic which means that we didn't touch product service at all we didn't touch i product service interface at all we just implemented iProduct service and maybe the most important thing it sold one of the solid principles it supports the open close principle making your code easier to maintain and scale and when you combine it with Scrutter, working with decorators becomes seamless even in large and complex application that's it for today this lecture is pulled from my last design pattern c book find the link in the description if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, share it with your developer friends and don't forget to subscribe for more .NET deep dives. Let me know in the comments how you are using decorator pattern in your projects. And as always, keep learning. See you in the next video. Dream big.